We got to talk about the uh, various fun and interesting ways in which the pre-patch broke. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the, I think, uh, one of the most obvious things as soon as you look at like the beta and you go, oh, this isn't ready to be, this UI is not ready. And then it's not ready. And then it goes live after like 16 hours of maintenance or whatever. And then it's still broken. Everyone goes, cool. Yeah, cool. I wonder if they discovered like last minute bugs. I mean, I know some things were reported in the beta anyway. Um, There's but times yeah. are times. It's yeah. a humongous. It's a it's it's a gi ginormous machine. So yeah. ultimately, I think uh, given the number of moving parts, they probably do kind of know about some of these issues, and they're oh. like, "Well, we can't not do this. We have." The customer service team set up. We have the marketing campaigns. We have all this shit set up. We can't just delay it by a week. The amount of money we would lose, uh, and you know, time we would lose, and stuff that would be fucked up, and uh, that's the problem. Like, because shippable bugs it's usually uh, fine. Usually, some shippables is fine. Uh, almost every game has shippables, but the problem is when the shippables get in the way of the user experience. Because I think yeah. for most devs, in an ideal time, like. There might be shippables that will affect such a tiny percentage that it doesn't really matter versus a case where there are shippables that really can impact everyone. And that's a thing where... For Which means they're not yeah, shippable. Yeah, for some reason, this is full of unshippable bugs. Yes. And you look at it's Stanzilla, who's the, the weak horse author, if I remember correctly, yeah. has a uh, GitHub tracking <laughs> of like UI list of UI issues that they found. It's a very long list, and it's also full of stuff that's really crazy, like, what's I've written today? Like, slash click doesn't work on a secure ability button. Bog. It just doesn't work. A very core feature of the actual UI setup does not work. Or, like, cool, I guess. Just things just don't work. And we could talk about it for a long time because there's just so many, many, many bugs. And even, like, the known issues support page is just like, we don't have a fix for this problem yet. Or it was like, what was it the, what if you drag an ability to the hotbar? And your hotbar's visibility is like set to not always show buttons. Yeah. And then it disappears, but it's still there. And you can press it, but you can't see it. And then reloading doesn't fix it. You have to swap, like change your visibility settings over and over again. You're like, that's like new behavior. That's not something I experienced at any point in beta. That's something that happened in the pre-patch. And there's this combination of things that weren't fixed from beta, how interwoven this whole system is, and then the whole like the whole adage of, you know, you don't know what you don't know what bugs you'll find you will show up in a like live environment yeah on yeah. your testing production you could be fine and then it's live and some other spaghetti some ghost in the shell is there and wrecks it yeah so that, that's what happens and i think that's the bit that's often hard for customers to understand that like yeah. sometimes something goes into a live environment and literally things happen differently uh which in a world where you just think, but it's all just simple logic, surely if it works, it works. Yeah. Uh, I think it's more that there are so many different moving parts that uh, while that may be correct in theory, it often mm. ends up not being correct in practice because yeah. it's kind of hard to be a time wizard as a coder, which I suppose is why having a, a test-driven development methodology is usually considered to be the dumb thing. I don't nest. I mean, the dumb thing in, like, software, maybe? I... I don't know what they're like with testing in World of Warcraft. I imagine Their they are, is, I feel uh, like it's not amazing. They have a substantially improved testing team size of engineers, I believe, in, oh. in Dragonflight, if I remember correctly. But it's still like, there's still stuff. And there's a lot of that going on where, you know, you like fit the senses from merging complexity causes all those problems. And it's like, yeah. sure, you can find a way to solve that. But you need, like, I, they're working on ancient code. And it's all deeply interwoven, and they clearly don't have the resources necessary to actually deal with that problem properly. They kind of dance around it a lot, but I think they're so used to band-aid fixes in the entire game's history that, like, actually digging something out and, you know, basically unearthing and, like, getting out all the cobwebs and dusting and cleaning and replacing it, you know, instead of a fresh coat of paint. This isn't a fresh coat of paint, this is trying to actually rebuild the structure. And that's where it's going so horribly wrong a lot of the time. And why there's clearly just features that are in the game that clearly aren't there. Whoever's on the UI team, the engineers there, are clearly not given either enough bodies or enough time yeah. to deal with the literal problems they have. And that's just unfortunate. But it's not even just that. It's not even just how difficult it is. They're clearly over leveraged. And there's one specific example that um, actually TJ just reminded me of. 
the reagent bag that's coming in Dragonflight. Oh, yes. You'll all have seen it on your bar. <laughs> you're not. You're never going to be able to fill that bag until you actually get the reagent bag in Dragonflight in Dragonflight content. Why was that on pre-patch? No one was able. No one had the time at Blizzard to give the whole pre-patch a final. Let's actually vet this for user experience. Yeah. No one was able to sit down and do that because one of the first things you would do if you were thinking from the average user perspective is. Oh yeah, what's on the fucking screen? Oh, apparently they have fixed it out. Yeah, they have fixed it. Which means that yeah, yeah. Here you go. Here's an empty bag. Everyone's going. How do I? How do I get this bag? How do I fill this slot? Sorry, you can't. That's terrible user experience. And anyone at Blizzard, if you had posed them that question or asked them to think about it, they'd have said, obviously that's terrible. We'll we won't ship that. It was, it was obviously but, discovered too late. Yeah, but obviously no one, yeah. And yeah. you know, you could have told them that any time on beta, you know, hey, tick this off before it goes. But clearly no one had the time to sit and go, sit down and go, okay, how is this pre-patch going to be ideal for people? Because I could have just said, oh, they're fucking idiots. They left that in. But that's clearly not true because they removed it immediately. And also it's obvious to anyone that's not going to work. No one was able to give it the pass for average users. And that's 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 just dire when people talked about because obviously we covered it pretty extensively last week. It seemed worse than most it seemed worse than we thought at least. I didn't see a lot of these kind of uh, weird UI bugs yeah. coming up, like the one where it says, Oh yeah, it doesn't save your loadout. That's cool, or your all your uh if you load into an instance shortly after finishing your like um key bands and action bar layout, they'll just disappear. Or like, cool, I never expected that. All the other stuff we, we talked about. Yeah, I, I did not expect it to be... Uh, I, I just didn't expect this this number of problems. And I suppose, it, in a way, like if we try to explain this, well, they have the full expansion coming out relatively soon. So that still is going to be priority number one because yeah. I think it's going to be the most correlated to like box sales. Mm -hmm. Or at least the 15th of November is the most correlated to... Uh, you know, yeah, to sales because that's content. when the track theory becomes available and there's content, which then sort of makes me think, is this like normal and heroic week? Yeah. Back when mythic used to be a week after normal and heroic. So, you know, normal heroic week would happen. It would be kind of busted. There'd be like balance issues. Blizzard would try to fix those things and then it would be good for mythic week. Yeah. It's, uh, I wonder if they knew, if they basically knew, right, this is going to have issues. We will just need to put live the best version of what we got and fix it up like a bunch of motherfuckers until, uh, as much as we can, until November 15th. And then do that again from November 15th to uh, expansion launch. And then their hope is that it's all good and stable by then. At the very yeah. least, what happens, and we, I can even like, inside of this from like us and you know our, our own internal game development, uh, like with the various versions of our demo, now it has been the case that the versions of the demo are generally quite a lot older than the current live build, but the demo is good for finding QA issues, mm. right? It absolutely is. Uh, you know, it is good for that, and uh, you can find you can find a lot more because it's just so distributed, right? So th that's where it gets interesting to me because it's like, what is the scale of internal testing? I mean, for us right now, we actually, as of like a few weeks ago, do have a dedicated member of staff for QA. Um, which is awesome. We're finding loads of really good things, but it still is the case. Like when the game goes live, by virtue of the number of testers being in the single, or I mean, I don't know how uh, exactly how many people are testing on the external QA company that we're working with, but let's just say it's like single to double digit numbers of like actual professional testers uh, who like even touch the game. Compare that to life. It's insane. And then put that onto something like World of Warcraft, which has got the complexity of 38 specs and all of the shit. And then what you're saying with the UI. The, the UI is like bandage fix over bandage fix over bandage fix. I mean, you know the way you have all those bar, or not bars, those frames at the left of the screen, right? Like for character dialogue. Did you know that even though from the user's perspective, that's all the same frame? It's not the same frame. It's actually like whenever you sort of change some of those gossip options, a new frame that looks identical to the other frame spawns on top of that frame. 
you never notice that it's a new frame because other than the text or whatever that changes, uh, it's not a new frame, but it like it is kind of. Um, so with that, like if you install the add-on move anything, you can like get a little bit uh, into how that works, but that's just like a perfect example of how like the whole thing's a fucking Django tower. And as well, the team's increased. Uh, I hope our video on the team size will come out relatively soon because it is done. Mm -hmm. um, is that up for patrons and members? I'm not entirely sure, isn't it? Okay, I'll have to double check that over the weekend yeah. and get that up. But look, the WoW team has grown significantly larger, right? Uh, now, whenever new people join in, generally it's not going to be the juniors in a team who are getting them up to speed. It's going to be the seniors. So it's very good that the team size has grown. And that they have grown the team size so much and still do seem to have an overall pretty well-rounded expansion at the end is decently impressive. But without a doubt a non-insignificant slice of time has, like, just will have had to have gone, or gone into getting new people up to speed. Yep. So I, I guess a lot of these things are kind of happening, and it's, it's that thing where Parkinson's Law is really powerful, right? You know, that uh, the duration of a task will span until its deadline, essentially. If you've done a university project, you know what that's like. That kind of does happen with release dates, it's why a whole bunch of crunch ends up happening, because let's just say having constant release pressure very quickly makes one realize what they actually really do need to do. It really brings that to the fore. Yeah. So I imagine there is a situation they've been you know, growing the team, doing all this shit, and uh, you know Parkinson's law is happening, but they're just like five percent short or like three percent short of where they need to be. Right? Because broadly speaking, all these features are in. They all do work. But they're just a little percentage broken. And that's yeah. obviously what you then notice as a user. Yeah, I mean, that's a problem when you're doing anything technological. It's yeah. like, you see a painting that needs a couple strokes to finish it off and you go, well, that's clearly done. You see a system in code that's like, needs a couple more lines to be finished. And it's just 0% working whatsoever. Because it needs those things to be finished. It's completely broken. Everything's going absolutely sideways. But you don't notice that with the painting or like even an illustration. You're like, oh, yeah, you know, the maybe the lighting's not really great there. Maybe the shading's not really great. But it's like, oh, yeah, I can see the point. Whereas you look at this and you go, this is clearly nowhere near finished whatsoever. What's happening? Yeah. And, it, and it's almost like kind of Schrodinger's code. It could be, oh, yeah, literally the next build, they'll identify a couple issues and most of these bugs be ironed out. Or this could this behavior could be unexpectedly the result of about five hundred different small bugs all acting together somehow or maybe there's something super fundamental that they did back in april that doesn't yeah. work and they have to rebuild based on that and it's you kind of like, know who who knows what do you what do you do you just kind of you have to allocate the time for it as a business you have to allocate the time yeah. for this product but whenever the entire world and all of the business needs say release please then it's like well it, it's going to be released they're not going to say, sorry, no pre-patch because of some UI bugs. Like, surprises happen. Yeah. I mean, this could be a situation where the team thought, right, there are a few known issues, but we'll be, we'll be okay. We can hot fix those. This is good enough to get out. Yeah. And then there is just a few more problems mm -hmm. that cascade a bit. And now it is not what the team expected they would ship and they have to scramble and react. One of the things I've noticed immediately is, you know, it's almost like what they say about plans don't, make con don't, don't survive contact with the enemy. My UI definitely made contact with the enemy as soon as pre-patch it. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do so many things differently. And then I was doing, um, I almost forgot the name for a second. I was doing some M plus yesterday and the day before I did some faded, right. faded Nathria and I was like, oh, okay. And this is entirely with, not entirely Blizzard UI, but this is Blizzard based UI with some fixes and with some weak ores. I was like, yep, this is completely playable. And there's a very different vibe to having all these UI assets that are Blizzard compared to using LVI that I substantially enjoy a hell of a lot more. Yeah, so I, I, need I to know do a the lot, feeling. Yeah, I need to do a lot more uh, fiddling around, but I'm like, this feels fresh enough that my brain isn't just going, this is the same fucking content you'd be doing. I'm like, nice, this is good. Also, a little bit of just seeing group loot again. I'm like, nice. <laughs> this yeah. is World of Warcraft, even though I know all the downsides and upsides to it. There's just a little bit of Blizzard brain going, ooh, those are from the old good, good times. I'm like, yeah, they are. <laughs>